This week we're helping a couple renovate this well-worn sunroom into a rustic retreat. Are you a little scared to work with Margie? I don't know, it seems like she gets angry a lot and starts tearing things down. I've been helping homeowners improve their home for a lot of years. They think it's intimidating, but it actually it can be a lot of fun. And we're here to help. Here you go. <laughs> Dad's the expert, but I've learned a few things along the way. Practical, realistic home improvement information is what today's homeowner is all about. This 1970s era house sits on a golf course and is home to Chuck and Margie Bartle, who bought it just a little over four years ago. At first, she said, you know, it looks like the dentist office. But once we came in and saw how much work the previous owners had done, we were, we were pretty sold. No stairs to go up and down. We love the location. It's our we retirement home. home. Yeah, we say it's our <laughs> retirement home. But the sunroom has always been a thorn into my side. <laughs> so this is the sunroom. That's a cozy little place there. I understand you guys have been working on it a little bit over the last year or so? Yes, yes. And about three years ago, there was um, paneling on all the walls that was gray. It was kind of ugly. So. so sheets of paneling over the existing? Yes, oh. sheets of paneling. Uh, yes. And being it's an exterior wall or so, I thought, because this used to be a screened-in porch, I had a feeling the reverse warden batten was going to be on the wall. So I took it down here and here, and it was fine. It was beautiful. It was, it was great until I got over here. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> oops. And I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> now what am I going to do? I mean, you like the reverse board and batten, so right. work with that and then maybe use the same material to do these walls that way. Yes. Okay. Yes, that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. And then those shelves back there, mm -hmm. I'd like to see those beefed up. I, I appreciate the storage, but right. the shelves do kind of look wimpy. It looks very utilitarian. Okay. Yeah. So okay. It's just been more functional and not so much style. I got you. I okay. have some ideas for that then. <laughs> then of course, this floor. This yeah, floor. Uh, what's happening with the floor here? It looks like uh, several experiments going on here. Yeah, what well, used to be indoor outdoor carpet that was in here and I got disgusted one day and ripped it up. Oh boy. And then after that, I was like, what have I done? <laughs> But once the carpet came up, we realized then the original concrete was in really, really bad shape. So we started with the leveler. The YouTube videos made the concrete level look all real simple. But once I got into it, I was almost done when I stopped and realized, like, I'm not sure what I've done here. I don't know if I've made things better or worse. You have carpet in the rest of the house. Do you want to continue carpet in here? Or are you going to? Mm -hmm. No, my desire is to have some of that new vinyl plank. Oh, the luxury okay. vinyl tile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, we have we have puppies. Okay. 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 <laughs> That's good for that too. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have this lovely odd ceiling fan. fan over here in the corner. Why it's there, I don't know. It just is a real odd place to have a fan, and yeah, even snug up the ceiling, it's always been too low. Um, I would love to have this ugly ceiling disappear. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand why. I wasn't going to say anything about the ceiling. <laughs> it's kind of falling in slightly, and it might have a, one or two little wet stains on it. Which we, we solved that problem. There's no okay, more. So, no more. Okay, yeah. Yeah, brand, the roof has been done. Next, next new question. Roof. Good, yeah, good. Fine. We love yeah, to hate it. We love to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would imagine it would uh, come down pretty easy. Yeah, I kind of figured that out when I was tearing the paneling oh, off over oh, here. Wow. I, I accidentally ripped some off, so. It I, I see kind of a trend. If she doesn't yeah. like something, it's coming down. I think we're gonna have to get her angry to get her working. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a little scared to work with Margie? I don't know, it seems like she gets angry a lot and starts tearing things down. Chuck should uh, maybe stir things up every now and then when he needs to get some work done, yeah. you know, like mowing grass, you know, painting, whatever, especially if you have a demolition project in mind. Yeah. It sounds Margie, like she's on it there. <laughs> To achieve the rustic look that Margie wants, we'll install new siding on two walls, beef up the bookshelves, install new flooring, and update the lighting and ceiling. Before Chelsea and I return, Margie's frustrations with the ceiling gets the best of her, so she and Chuck attack the ceiling tiles. Oh, yeah. I've been dying to rip this up. Ooh, that's awesome. It's coming down really easy. Well, some of it's glued. I apparently got into some glue, and I have picked and picked and picked at those things, and they are just not falling off. I'm seeing that I'm gonna be picking up staples all night. There was at least a million and a half staples that we had to pull out of the ceiling. 
Chuck has to be at work when we're ready to start the project. <laughs> so on day one, it's just Margie, Chelsea, and me. Oh, wow. It's like you knew we were coming over or something. Um, Cleared it yes. out. She got mad, didn't she? <laughs> I got mad at the ceiling tile. <laughs> Just a little bit. I, actually, it wasn't too bad except for this middle area where we had glue. Oh, yeah. And we ended up using a shovel to get that off. <laughs> I ended up taking the flathead shovel and just, you know, barbarian like just hacking and whacking to get them all scraped off. So I'll go ahead and get that ceiling fan down. We've got our electrician coming a little bit later. So uh, let's see if we can make a difference today on it, okay? Okay, okay sounds well, let's good. We can work on scraping that glue off. It is quite a chore to get this glue off. It's really hard. It's almost like scratching concrete off, and it's even made more difficult by having to do it over our heads. It's gonna take a long time to scrape all the glue off of the ceiling, so I might as well try a whole bunch of different things to see what sticks, or rather, doesn't stick. It's tedious, to say the least. My anger doesn't get the glue off. Unfortunately, the best solution seems to be a window scraper and a lot of elbow grease. Spring planting often begins with getting the plants into the ground as soon as possible. If you put them in too soon, a hard frost can kill them, so you have to be careful of that. But one way to protect the plant is to create a cloche or a mini greenhouse out of an empty soda bottle. This is a two liter bottle that I just use a utility knife to slice off the bottom, and it creates this little, again, like a little mini greenhouse. So you just slip it over the plant. These happen to be herb plants, they're oregano. Here's a second bottle for this plant here. And again, just slice, it doesn't have to be that neat, doesn't really matter. Slide it over, beautiful, there you go. Little mini greenhouse. Now that will capture the sun and the heat during the day to get those plants growing quickly. But if it gets too hot, you can simply twist off the cap, let cement heat escape. But again, at night, I'd highly recommend putting that back on because you don't want to frost to hurt these plants and that'll trap some of the heat and in two or three weeks you'll have fresh herbs from your garden. Chuck and Margie's sunroom is getting a rustic renovation. While Chelsea and Margie continue with the demo, Bear arrives with the siding we're installing on the unfinished interior walls. All right, there you go. Now this siding we're using is called commonly RB&B or reverse board and batten and the reason for that name is traditional board and batten would have boards and a batten strip over it so hence the name reverse board and batten. Now it's used on millions and millions of homes on the exterior but I'm seeing it a lot more being used on the inside just like we're doing on the sunroom. That means it has to be cut around windows and outlets, just like drywall. But we can tack it in place with a nail gun, and the seams overlap, so no need for joint compound. Before we cover all the walls, our electrician Jeremy arrives to wire the new lights. We don't know where it all goes and what it all is. So if that junk, you know, I, I don't know. If there's any way we can clean this up, I don't have any idea where anything goes, mm -hmm. but if there's any of it we can eliminate or consolidate, it'll just make it look better. Okay, we'll do so, what we can. Good luck on that. All right. <laughs> okay, Margie, I have some ideas to like just make this whole wall a little bit more substantial yeah. and look a little bit more built in. Okay. So I was thinking, first of all, we'll do one by two strips on the front of the shelf boards just to make them look chunkier. Perfect. And then I thought about eliminating the bottom one and Perfect. then maybe reuse these or get new boards and put them from floor to here. Yes. Maybe one board and it'll just kind of frame the TV. That sounds awesome. And then the last piece, the cherry on top, no, I'm just kidding, <laughs> is painting the whole wall the same color, the black. Oh, that would be look the great. The shelves and everything. Yeah, make it look like a, like a built-in. Yeah, just like a statement piece. Yes. With the shelves being black and the brackets being black, I thought it would make the space look more intentional if we also painted the wall behind those elements black as well. So I'm just getting in the groove to the very top and we're gonna put a piece of one by two up here. Okay. I'm getting in the groove, Margie. Woo! Woo! Get into the groove, girl, you got to move. She's a lot like me. You say the word and you just go right into song. Finally, someone who appreciates my sense of musical humor. Get into the groove. No, we don't own the rights to that song. Oh, you can't okay. sing that. <laughs> I don't 
don't know what this is. Looks like a stool. That's it. That's part of a fanny lifter. <laughs> so Margie has this stool and it just looks like a stool, but then she calls it the fanny lifter. And apparently it's a piece of exercise equipment from the 80s or something. Does my butt look good? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a great name. So of course, I have to talk about it for at least the next 30 minutes. I will no longer paint without the fanny lifter. <laughs> Does this still make my butt look big? <laughs> no, but your butt makes your butt look big. <laughs> oh, thanks for laughing at my jokes, Margie. <laughs> you know, it's a little aggravating when you're, let's say, working on a house at the beach and you're looking out and you're yes. sitting there on the beach. Same way when the you have golfers. a golf course and people are going by swinging it, you know, and I'm... It's really out. getting to you, isn't it? Maybe tomorrow. Uh-oh. Once Jeremy wires the ceiling for the new lights, he manages to clean up that menagerie of wires in the wall. You know, Jeremy's got to be just about the best remodeling electrician out there to take that command center and <laughs> condense web. it into that. That was, that's good. That's going the extra mile right yeah, there. Yeah, I like it. It looks so much better. Oh, yeah. With the ugly ceiling tiles down and seeing the rough sawn plywood underneath, we're just gonna roll with the rustic vibe, cover up the seams with some lattice strips, give it a fresh coat of white paint, and it's gonna look great. I feel very vulnerable with my arms up in the air, like they're gonna come and tickle me. You know I've been tickled a time or two when I'm standing there with my arms up and I'm scared I'm gonna be tickled again. And did you? No, but it, had you not been working on the other end of the lattice, <laughs> you would have been tickling me, I know it. I would have been tickling you. That's funny. So to wrap up this ceiling and day one of this project, Margie and Chuck cover it with two coats of paint overnight. Installing a dimmer switch is an easy electrical project that you can help transform the feel and ambient look of any room. But not all dimmer switches work with LED bulbs. Well, Lutron has come out with one that not only is compatible with LED bulbs, but they can also be used for incandescent bulbs or halogen bulbs. Now, I've got one right here. This is the Sonata. And after you install it, which is very easy, by the way, you just press the pad and the light comes on. Now, you use your fingertip and you slide it along the pad to either intensify or dim the light. Once you're done, of course, you just turn it off and a little blue light illuminates so that you can find the switch in the dark. Now, it doesn't require a neutral wire. Now, what does that mean for you? If you have an older home or a new home, you can wire this right up and change the look of any room. In just one day, we've completed the siding, ceiling, and electrical work in Margie and Chuck's sunroom. Now it's time to smooth out that floor. The first thing we want to do this morning is to prep the floor so that we can install our LVT or luxury vinyl tile a little bit later. Now, luxury vinyl tile, extremely popular. I really love the color that she picked out here, but it is very thin and not very forgiving when you have a few divots in the floor like we have here. Now, Chuck did a pretty good job in grinding down a lot of the edges, but when you look at a straight edge like this, you can tell we have three quarters of an inch gap there, half inch down there, which means we've got a big, big spot right here that's going to have to be ground down. So we're bringing in the heavy machinery for that, which is going to create a fair amount of dust. This grinder we picked up from the rental center uses three diamond tipped heads spinning at high speeds to shave away the concrete. So it seems to be cutting it pretty well. So what I would do, just keep kind of hitting these ridges here and there. If you can handle it a little while, I got something I got to take care of. All right. All right, man. Okay, how's it going out here? Good. Going, good. going pretty good? Yeah, how's the grinding going? Is that working? Uh, yeah, it's going pretty well. It's going to take him a little while, but I think we'll end up getting it pretty smooth. Good. So, uh, all right, we all keep it going. We got to get some things done. Uh, we should be very suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was just a matter of time before Dad ditched our project to play some golf. When you're a foreman and you plan everything out and you have all your laborers working properly, <laughs> it gives you an opportunity to break away and do some more planning. You need, you need lots of space to plan <laughs> yes, I mean, and to come up with genius ideas. Oh, you get it. You get it. Good. Once Bear finishes the floor and my planning is complete, we begin installing the trim around all of the windows. 
Well, I knew some of the windows would not be completely level as far as from one next to the other. But once we started lining up the longer pieces of wood, we were able to compromise a little bit. And looking at them now, you can never tell it. All right, so this needs to be flush with the top of the bracket. The shelf brackets Margie and Chuck had before were, while well, economical, they were very commercial looking. So with a little shopping around, I was able to find some other brackets that were a lot more streamlined, clean looking, modern, but also still very budget friendly. An easy way to elevate the look of bookshelves is to install a piece of wood on the front of the shelves just to make them look more chunky and substantial and less dinky. At the end of the day, I decide to give Margie and Chuck a little head start on the painting. You don't want him painting your house? <laughs> I caught you red-handed again. The paintbrush yeah. in your hand. Uh, we hit a new low here. I don't know what happened. I was just standing there. You were on there. a high from your golf game. Oh. That you were like, I can paint. Overnight, Margie and Chuck complete the rest of the paint job. So early the next morning, we can tackle the floor. I'm glad you're here with us today. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad to be here today. And this is just I, the thing that you want to do again, right? I feel like I right? missed out on all the fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see how that grinder just kind of cut this down a little bit. Yeah. And then you can see how this is just filling it in. I mean, we're going to be in great shape. And it dries in 15 minutes. The floor patch compound is applied with a smooth trowel. For the floor adhesive, we need a notch trowel. Notch trowel actually sets the thickness of a material like an adhesive to be consistent throughout the entire area. You use the same trowel, you'll have the same thickness throughout. We're about to lay the first piece. Yay! Now push down on it. We are in the floor business now. Yay! Okay. First one down. How many more to go? Dad, I noticed when we're pushing the board together, a little bit of glue is oozing out. Inevitable. It was intentional. So it's not all are we gluing glue. underneath. We're gluing them together. See what I mean? Ah. But you do have to wipe it up pretty quick, or it's a tremendous mess later on when it dries. Having it work together, it seems to go pretty fast, a lot faster than I thought it would go. With having Danny spreading the glue and us laying the pieces and uh, getting the cuts, it seems to go pretty quick. I never used one of these floor rollers before, but it's kind of fun. Yeah, it is pretty fun. You know, you need to be able to keep pushing it down and pushing right. it down. That's the easiest way to do it. Or a rolling pin. You could do a rolling pin. Like for baking? you could stretch abs. You could do the ab Fanny lifter. Like and you could, yeah. We'll try that next job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get that fanny into shape. <laughs> Chuck and Margie's sunroom was a converted screen porch that was a mixture of unfinished projects and poor design decisions by the previous owner. The bare floor and dated ceiling tiles did nothing to enhance the view. And the bookcase, well, it was functional, but a little institutional. Now the room has a cohesive look that's warm and inviting. Extending the siding around the room sets a rustic tone that is echoed by the lattice paneled ceiling. The enhanced bookcase now looks more like a built-in entertainment center and the new window trim frames the view beautifully. Plus the floor finally makes the room feel like a finished part of the home. And we did it all for about $1,500 in materials. I'm thrilled. I couldn't be happier with the way the sunroom has turned out. It is gorgeous. What I was just most happy to see is just how much just some paint colors and some good trim work and the new flooring. I mean, just how much it's made a difference in that room. It looks like a completely different room. Now walking into my house, you see the sunroom. It's like an extension of the living room now. We used to keep those doors closed because there was just nothing to see. And it just looks so pretty, so it's like we have two living areas now, and it's going to be so much fun to show it off. Now, do you have an area around your home that maybe is not quite finished or not quite the way you want it to be? Well, that's exactly what Chuck and Margie had, a space that was a little neglected and they wanted it to look a little better. Well, now they have a beautiful rustic sunroom. Along the way, I hope we've been able to share with you some ideas that maybe inspire you and give you some thoughts about things that you can do at your house. That's what we want to do every week here on Today's Homeowner. I'm Danny Lifford. We'll see you next week. No, but it, had you not been working on the other end of the lattice, you would have been tickling me. I know it. I would it. have been tickling you. That's funny. That's funny.
Good clean fun. It makes us both laugh. <laughs> Next week, we're helping a family upgrade their most used entryway <laughs> so their guests won't think they live in a garage. <laughs>